Hey everybody and welcome to Audie's Creations. I wanted to go ahead and do an updated video of Locklick Ideas Studio. Now throughout the month when I ever I opened Locklick Ideas Studio, I had noticed I'd gotten a pop-up of a new 2.0 version of Ideas Studio coming out. There was quite a bit of comments here and there with the Facebook groups that I follow with Locklick and they were stating that the Lock Lake Idea Studio 2.0 wasn't going to be released until June 30th, which I did try to open the app and see like, oh, did this change? Like, cause it wasn't like verifiable. They did not post this on any social media or blog that I could find on Lock Lake. But I went ahead and waited till today and I got up super early to test this out. And here's some of my findings. Okay, so I do want to prompt this with the software updates graphic that they did roll out first so that way we can go over things and then show you what things I did within the new 2.0 update. Um, they did inform us that it was coming, it was coming over and over every time you open the app. Um, I probably got this notice probably halfway through June, not all of June. I don't know if anybody else got it all of June, but I, I only solely remember this coming up halfway through June. But they said that there is going to be a new interface and seamless navigation. They have a stored password now because it became very frustrating for me because I had a long email and a long password that is just repetitive, re typing it over and over again every time I would try to launch the app. But they also updated the support files up to five megabytes of images. On Locklick Idea Studio V1, we did see that they had a limit of 2 kilobytes for the image uploads, which is pretty detrimental for us that use Print and Cut a lot in their software. We saw that the printouts became very distorted and very pixelated, and they weren't as high quality as we would buy the images online. So it wasn't something from the image or the sellers most of the time, it was just the software itself digitizing things smaller and compressing them so they did change that to five megabytes which should be helpful for a lot of the quality in your print and cut options the next thing that they are including in this is that there will be more text editing tools including alignment word and line spacing and more which a lot of users are looking forward to a text warp or more text features coming into the software which i would like to see myself they included that users will be able to save in different formats including svg png and jpeg and then they put etc which is great because we want to be able to save our printing cut projects and other things because sometimes it just, it, I don't think it just saved. They put a more user-friendly guides and assistance. So for people who are brand new to the software, they'll be able to have a better understanding of the software and guides to go ahead and help guide you into an easier crafting experience. They added abundant images with refined filtering options and more customized options for easy to use ai images there's a little dot 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 here in insinuating that there's more to a, the software update but we'll be able to see that when we update today the new lock click idea studio 2.0 is launching on june 2024 welcome to join the extraordinary journey this 2.0 version requires reinstallation so jumping right into it they give you a prompt once you opened it today that you need to download and install the version 2 software. I went ahead and did that just fine for Windows. They do have other applications and apps for different devices. I also want to say just for the record that I did not uninstall version 1.9.9 because I wanted to be able to compare the two if I could. Um, they did both function very well side by side as you'll see as i get into the editing and and playing with the software but i just wanted to put that out there so they did include this really cute login and register page which i kind of appreciate because it's not too many cute little logins we can see it just it just feels good to see a software be more fluid and up to date like we don't want like a broken down looking 98 version software with our new devices 
So once you open Lockwick Idea Studio 2.0, you're going to be going through these prompts that it's going to show you where is what, everything that's changed. The first tab you're going to see is Canvas Library in My Zone. And if you guys remember, Canvas is just the space that you're working on. The library is actually the collection that they offer for free or with their subscription. I'm, I'm assuming that they'll be having a subscription thing soon since they had the pro upgrade in version one. And then they also have the My Zone, which is going to be your projects and the things that you will be saving. So remember, they're going to be having SVG, PDF, and JPEG as a file extension to save in your My Zone area. The next prompt you're going to see is the design section, which will be the left side of the panel here. And you're going to see it's going to go over the tools that they offer in their software. Within this update, they have the shape, text, pen, and import, and AI painting assistant tool. Now, these are things that they had prior, which were at the top kind of scattered on the toolbar there, but now they have this on the left panel. So you'll also notice on the left design toolbar that there are those pro stickers over some of the features of shape, pen, and AI painting, which in version one, they had stated that these were going to be pro features. But I do want to say like, I haven't seen a pop-up or any kind of page or blog that kind of mentioned what these were going to be priced at and when they will start charging for these features or if they will at all. So the third prompt lets you know you can right click and edit your images and do copy, delete, and merge. I personally did not see merge on my right click or maybe I have to use a certain shape or image for this to happen. But when I was testing it out, I did not catch this. So if you guys see it, let me know in the comments. I might have missed that. And here's a side by side of what the options look like from V1 and V2, just so you can get an input of what the changes happen and what it looked like before. The next prompt shows you about the layers panel and how things have changed here. It has a really cute little animation when you click this little bubble up here for the layers panel to pop in and out. You also have the property panel on top now. So if you're going to change the layer color, you're going to just do that on top here. So here's the side by side of the layers panel. I think the UI looks way better here in the update. I'm hoping that there's going to be a couple more buttons here that we can play with here on the bottom where there's a little bit of space. But yeah, I think this is a great improvement here on the layers panel. So the UI for make and the task list look great. I think that it just makes it a better crafting experience when things look more organized and they're definitely more fluid. They improved that a lot. I do feel like I had like a little bit of an error when I kept trying to click cutting parameters. It wouldn't let me like check the box in order to modify my cut settings, but it could have been since I had installed it and just opened it and went to crafting that it kind of just bugged out. So I went ahead and refreshed it and it worked again. And as I got into the cutting parameters, I was able to modify it. But I do have to say that there wasn't like a setting for me to choose like plain paper or sublimation paper where I would be able to test the cut for printing cut. And as we all know in Cricut or Design Space or any other software maybe, you do have to calibrate every time the software does have an update. I, I don't know if any other software just automatically has like great printing cut um, after a software update, but I know from my experience in Design Space and Lockwick that you do need to recalibrate every update. So I would like to make a printing cut video separate for this so we can go through that separately because there is a huge update to the calibration as well. So now when you click on your account icon in Lockwick Idea Studio, a lot of the settings for your personal preferences are under their language and also the feedback and error tab. So if you want to go to that, all you have to do is click your icon rather than the help uh, tab that was actually in V1. So that's a little convenient part on their end. That was pretty cool. 
So they did remove this little function here where you would right click on the canvas in V1 where you would change your settings, your matte settings from mm to inches or vice versa. But now they have this actually in your user settings right now. So that's pretty cool. I think it's a better place there. So they did move the feedback and errors option over here under account. You can go ahead and click your account picture and it'll pop up right there. The thing is now that they have added a few different things which had me thinking because they made an option of what device you're using that you're having problems with. I was thinking, I was like, maybe they're going to come out with another machine or an upgraded machine that has different blades and maybe one that's portable but i did see that they have a drawing machine coming out or it has come out so that's good that they have that separate option there and they also included like you can put your email in if you don't want to use your business email and you want to use a different email and also what type of error you're encountering so so there's design cutting material device or other function or problem that you're having Okay, so overall, there was so much to unpack on this software update for Locklick Ideas Studio 2.0. And if you stuck around this long, thank you. But the end is really for Locklick and those who want to hear my requests for change. I think Locklick is on the right path listening to their users. But like any other software, there's going to be some things that we don't like or that are not functioning properly. So I made a small list of things I feel that should be improved. My first thing is going to be fonts. My downloaded or purchased fonts I have on my system did not come up and I do like the ones that they offer and the favorites option, but I want my fonts. The weld and unite uh, tool there, it does not unite or weld scripted fonts. Um, when you do go to cut them, you do see each letter cut out on the script words. The resizing of files when I import or upload my own projects or images, my files kept getting resized and then they kept moving on the cutting mat. Like it would just be kind of farther out than I needed. And whenever I pressed make, I feel like it was way out of the print and cut lines. Like it should already be aligned in my opinion in the print and cut area. Um, I don't love how if I needed to click back during cutting my project, uh, it resized it back and put it where it was off to the side. And I know there was like a warning there that says like, you know, don't move it once you're cutting. But I'm hoping that there's a back button or like a preview in the event the software does bug out from use and like heavy crafting. So I did see a little bit of a, a bug, I would say, or like an error in the print and cut scaling or the AI scaling. It takes way too long to like scale the cutout option for like stickers. So maybe if there was like a number value we could input to kind of jump scale or like a scale bar that would be a lot easier instead of pressing like go up, go up one, go down one, like that's exactly what they have right now but i think it'd be better if they offered something like that i do feel like ai images needs a little improvement with their sticker options but i do really like the idea that they put that in there um also i do think that some users might want to be able to share projects so can we make that happen lock click <laughs> And then also something that really bummed me out and I know it's like so minute is that the themes I, I really like the light mode and the dark mode. I'm someone who is always using dark mode for everything. So can we get that back? So this is the end of my video and if you guys did stay to watch this whole thing and hear me basically rant. I really do appreciate it. If you guys like this video and the content that I make regarding Locklick, please leave a like, subscribe, or just leave a comment if you have questions. I'll do my best to get back. I know that I'm very appreciative of Locklick for improving their software and just making those changes. And as someone who is continuously trying to work through these things while they make those changes, I appreciate that they're listening to their consumers and the crafters out here. And I know things don't happen overnight, 
but being heard by the people that you are supporting is a great deal so anyways guys thank you for watching and i hope to see you guys in the next video i hope you have a lovely july if you're seeing this on july 1st so happy july 1st and i'll see you guys in the next video bye